Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Established in 2017, Goodman's creates sustainable investment solutions for advice professionals and retail customers, focusing on tools that help customers engage with sustainable and responsible investing. The goal is to play a key role in redirecting capital to environmentally sustainable, socially responsible, and ethical business. The Goodman's Advisor Portal is a discovery, analytics, research, and advice support tool designed to give advisors the confidence to determine their clients' responsible investment needs, analyze portfolio holdings, and access institutional-grade environmental, social, and governance research for over 7,000 global equities, ETFs, and funds. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Clayton here from XY Advisor uh, as a part of the ethical um, podcast series. We have Hope here from Simply Ethical and Hope is a financial planner who specializes in ethical investments. So uh, it's a real honor to have you on. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for asking me. Hi, of course. Um, Now, having a business that's called Simply Ethical, I feel has a very, um, has done a very good job of identifying a niche and, and just going after it, which, you know, if you think of, say, uh, Brett Evans with your uh, expats and Liam Shaw with the SMSF, and I mean, you're, you're the advisor that comes to my mind when I think of ethical investments. Be- That's because, great. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're like the one that has put the most sort of time, effort and focus um, into it. So um, talk to me about like, do you find that there is enough demand out there to, to run a financial planning business that is very much centered around ethical investments? Well, there definitely is because there's um, many of us around the country that um, have bigger practices than me actually and have been going for about 30 years. So Ethical Investment Advisors, who is my licensee, They've actually got, um, yeah, 30 year old practices and they've really been leading the way in ethical investment. Um, so I joined them about four or five years ago and branded separate from them because I wanted my own thing. Right. But, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, when I was with Hill Ross, one of the things that I, uh, I, I didn't enjoy is that I needed to have the, the name Hill Ross in the business name. So to, to have your own identity in an environment of people who have set up the structure, I feel like is a, is a really good advantage. So you, uh, you live um, sort of North New South Wales. Um, now, do you think, would, would you argue that um, people outside of, so I'm, I'm originally from the mid North coast, right? So like around Coffs Harbour. So, I'm, I'm quite familiar with, with people with that lifestyle. Um, and I can definitely see that, uh, people would be interested in, you know, ethical style of investments, uh, from around there. But what would you say to the city slickers around Australia? Would would you say that there are, do you think that there's, um, enough interest in this type of, uh, investment philosophy that, other advisors around Australia should start allocating more and more of their concentration to perhaps this style of investment. Definitely a growing market. If you look at the Responsible Investment Association, Australasia, their benchmark report shows that it's just growing exponentially bigger and bigger every year. Um, And a lot of our um, interest comes from clients with existing advisors that aren't able to uh, service that need or um, even appreciate the value of ethical investment. So, right. yeah. Okay, interesting. So, um, other advisors are coming to to you because they've got clients who want ethically focused. No, no, other cl- no, a client, a clients, uh, sorry, clients of other advisors. So they they might ha- they might not be. So some we get new clients that don't have financial advisors, but also clients that have existing financial advisors that. Essentially, they yeah they they can't they don't have the uh, know how of ethical investments. So there's definitely um, 
a push and with millennials as well i think millennials are something around 80 percent more likely to pay more for a product that is got a that is sustainable they're willing to pay more for a, something that's good quality and sustainable so um and, well, and there's an expectation from millennials that there is that sustainability and uh, responsible investment is at, like at the core of of an investment strategy, even if it's going to make less money. Not that ethical investment does make less money. Yes. There's been lots of studies into it, but that, that they, that, that, yeah, these generations coming up have an expectation of responsible investment. Wow. So your argument is essentially, especially if you're focused on uh, millennials, they're, they're interested to the point where they're willing to accept um, worse results. The fact that it doesn't, equal worse results is just, I mean, a clearer picture of why this is important to really start paying attention to. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, how did you get into advice? Um, I studied a bachelor of international business on the Gold Coast cool. and it was such a general degree and it, I came out and I was like, Oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> And I just, I think I really wanted a job that was going to help people. So I started working, I got, yeah, did my DFP and started working um, for an MLC advisor. Yep. I did that for, oh, I can't, quite a few years. And then I went back and studied my master's of um, sustainable development and environmental management. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I was working from home, just contract power planning yep. while I was doing that. Um, and then... Then that big oil spill happened in the Gulf of Mexico. And yeah. I was like, just not okay. Like, we can't keep yeah. doing this. Um, and the Murray Darling had its first big bust up um, as well. And I was like, oh, I just, I just feel like my parents were always right, those crazy hippies from Byron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what you mean, though. <laughs> We've got to look after the environment. So I just researched it and I did a lot of work with um, actually NGOs like 350.org. And did a lot of divestment work, helping people just divest bank accounts out of the big four banks because um, the banks chose fossil fuels. And um, that's just clearly not in our best interest going forward. Wow. Um, and then I found ethical investment advisors through that um, and just did lots and lots of study and research on my own. Um, obviously, having that master's really helped. Yeah. I did a lot of, um, it was a lot of business-based sustainability um, in that. Um, probably a bit more hands-on rather than just like checking things online and how sustainable, but yeah, but it definitely helped. I, I'm so, I'm, I'm kind of impressed to hear because to me, the whole banking thing is probably the biggest, in my mind, the biggest, except for the ship that's, you know, actually dragging up the Great Barrier Reef, reef itself, I feel like the funding mechanisms, which are the, the banks, somehow just escape all sort of responsibility. And then it's, it's interesting for me to hear that you, you've helped people get out of those banks and to go into different banks because that to me super makes sense. So if, like, if someone's genuinely concerned, then it makes sense not to give business to the banks that are, um, you know, affording these types of things to happen. Now, of course, they do a million other things as well. Um, but in this particular case, I, I think that's a pretty clear message to send. And at, at They're still putting more money into fossil fuels than they are into renewable energy. So it's, right. you know, it's still a big issue. And, I mean, the Royal Commission was absolutely terrible on top of, like, com Com Commonwealth Bank making like they're making super profits on the back of Australians you know they're not paying out Commonsure are not paying out their insurance premiums so there's people in Australia struggling yeah because they're not doing the right thing so it's like I don't yeah for me it's very easy and clear <laughs> yeah yeah and um and that's super interesting what I, I actually now understand with full understanding that this is certainly not a recommendation but <laughs> <laughs> are there any banks out there uh, that you feel are more ethical than others? There's definitely banks that are more ethical um, and it's, there's different types because there's um, credit unions. So they're generally yeah. better. Yeah. 
Go banana case. Profit. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but we currently invest in Oz Wide Bank and they're doing, um, they, they, they had a few bit of trouble a few years ago, but they're, at the moment they're really good. And we also invest in Bendigo. Yeah. And, I mean, it's hard. Like no bank is probably perfect. Oh, totally. But, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a hundred percent, but you know, the, the best of a, the best of a, what you could call a bad bunch, I guess, is, mm. is probably a good way to go about it. Um, interesting. So in your experience, um, do you find that people are coming to you because, um, you, you're known for ethical investments or, uh, are you sparking up conversations with people? And then introducing the topic, even if they're not, even if it's not front of mind, I, I guess what my question is, is like for the average advisor that's out there, you know, like when I had my financial planning business, I was so focused on, I guess, finding out what the client is doing in their life and what they want to be doing in their life. And then having a look at their financial situation and then sort of coming up with strategies on how to improve that. And I was taking so much in from them and then problem solving and handing it back that I wanted to keep any complexities as far away as possible. Right. And this is, I guess the crux of my, as I've been going through this series, it's like, you know, put forward a premise, uh, are the banks. So for example, the banks, um, are they ethical in the, in their behavior? And it's like, well, okay, no. Um, and then next premise, you know, are you going to talk to the, to the client about it? And so how do you bring the subject up in a way that doesn't distract from the main goal, which is the betterment of your client? Often a big part of the main goal is to invest ethically. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's, that is definitely always a goal in, in the statement of advice and that we discuss. Um, and it's often, so we have it in our client profile or fact find. It comes, there's, there's a section there that's sort of like a template and they can tick bits that they want to, a section they want to um, support and things they want to avoid. Um, and then there's also bits for them to free write. And often people do, they're like, we don't, we want to really stay away from the banks or they'll say, um, Logging is just so important to me. We, like, we, we can't have that in the portfolio. Or They might say that, you know, some clients don't want to invest in alcohol and other clients are happy to invest in alcohol or gambling. Well, no, no one wants to invest in gambling. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, so there's like, the, if, clients are all a bit different, but they definitely, um, I, and then I guess in the statement of advice, it's just part of the investment recommendations. Yes. Um, so you know, you, you have to give an investment recommendation based on your, your research and why you, you, you choose these investments. So it's just really part of that. Um, and I guess the clients that seek us out, when it is mostly client, clients that seek us out or seek me out. Yes. Um, I do strike up conversations sometimes and people are like, oh, my God, I've got to see you. And that does happen, but it's more I'm more sought out. And so yeah. there's generally a level of understanding of what's going on in the world and how it can be beneficial to put money into good things yep. um, coming from those clients. Um, awesome. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's a really good, uh, as I said before, you know, I feel like you've, you've done a really good job there with, uh, you know, pushing this niche forward. And um, what would you give as advice, right? Let's say I still had Hill Ross Silverstone, you know, um, yeah, just dealing with, I guess, fi finance professionals was kind of my, um, my niche mm. and how would, uh, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I, during this series, the question that I've think would work well for me. And then uh, you tell me what you think of it. And then if I can improve it all. So my question to introduce the subject was going to be, Hey, is there anything in your weekly shopping that you avoid or, or choose to, uh, you know, purchase based on any kind of environmental or ethical reasons? Like, do you mm. avoid caged eggs, for example? Mm. That was, so that's kind of the question that's popped in my mind, which I feel would be a really good introductory question rather than say like putting them a textbook in front of them going, this is 101 yeah. of ethical investing, you know, and they're like, 
I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, going to get to Rome in 12 months time. So like, I don't want to, I don't want to distract people, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I, if I was still giving advice, I, w- I would want to make sure that I'm giving them the opening to mm. bring the topic up. If it was important to them, do you have any sort of cool prompting questions? Maybe you're out networking that you can sort of, gauge pretty quickly whether they'd be interested or not well i probably just mentioned something about sustainability <laughs> yeah okay cool <laughs> if it was me yep um somehow yep. um yeah okay so, I, I guess yeah so what what would be an example of a question or, or a statement how would you introduce it um i guess if i if i explained what i would do then um, I would just say that we, um, like we, oh, we, I'm, I'm an ethical investment specialist and we seek to move money away from things that are unethical or irresponsible like yep. um, fossil fuels, um, poor labour standards um, and gambling, say, and move that money into things that are sustainable and good for the communities in which they operate. So renewable energy, healthcare, um, and animal rights. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. That's so, so, so I, yeah, no, no, no. But that's really cool to understand because sometimes I think maybe I, maybe I'm, maybe I would be a little bit hesitant to be that way, but perhaps maybe I shouldn't be. So, but, so you're suggesting just like saying it outright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, the thing is, though, I think you would find that if you actually ask people, how do you feel about investing into child labour? Like most Ooh. people yeah. are going to say, say good no, rates. that's not okay. Yet yeah. most, a lot of our clothes are still made by companies. Yeah. There's child labour involved. So it's like yeah. if you ask those really hard questions, or not hard, but those really, you know, powerful questions somehow or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. with most people. But then, you know, you do talk to people and they're like, I want to invest in gambling because it makes money. And I'm like, all right, you're not my client. <laughs> <laughs> Aristocrat. Have you seen yeah. the stock price? Um, so, okay, cool. Well, then on that, because uh, I can see, you know, you're very comfortable with just sort of bringing it up and, and talking about it at face value. Um you, we, we were talking about before this podcast started that there was a pretty strong argument to suggest that due to the FASIA requirements um, that this is even a conversation that we sort of kind of need to be having. Yes. So the FASIA standard two, um, you must act with integrity and in the client's best interest. Um, if you look in the, FPA guide on the FASIA code of ethics. Um, we just found it as we were all studying for our exams. <laughs> um, on page 18, it says you should ask your client if there are any environmental, social, or ethical considerations that are important to them. Um, yeah. And I mean, you could you could ask that, and that may not get a response um, that says anything because it might not be like I guess that's the question you were trying to get at before. Is that that they might not really understand what ethical or social considerations could be made. Yeah. Um, but the banks are probably a good one to talk about because because of all the recent stuff in the Royal Commission and there's, um, yeah, people just don't, people don't like them as much as they used to. While lot, many people are still investing in them, they're not quite happy with how they've been behaving. Yeah. Um, so using an example could be powerful. Um, yeah, okay. What, what would you say now? I think you're, you're probably well placed to be able to answer this. <laughs> if, if we would say, let's say one is not really interested, five is really interested, what are the things that people want to avoid at one compared to five? Like, who, what, could, okay. because I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to guess sort of moving outside of, I think fossil fuels is a big one okay. because um, climate change is such a well, current issue that's going on. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, like tobacco is huge. People don't want to invest in tobacco. Yeah. 
Um, fossil fuels, in, including coal seam gas. Um, recycling, um, people want to support that. And renewable energy is huge. Um, yeah, they're, they're probably the top ones. I'm just having a look at these lists that we've got. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it just it really depends on the client and where they've come from and what, you know. Um, yeah. But well, how, how involved they already are in their private life, I guess. Um, I'm guessing, so here, I, let me, I'll put my concern that I have with ethical investments um, that I've sort of formulated during, during this series. And mm. let you tell me why it's invalid. So, okay. so, <laughs> so my concern is um, I don't want to make people feel like they're bad, right? If they're not already considering this. So if I put myself in the client's position and then I turn up, well, let's not even say it's a financial planner. Let's say it's a, a physiotherapist or like it, it, it doesn't matter who you're in front of. But if I was asked the question, what, like, do you support child labor? Like if I was genuinely asked that question, I'd be like, of course not. Right. But then I feel like that's sort of a leading question. And, and then what I would think is whatever, whatever the conclusion was, that you got me to agree to after that question, yeah. I feel like probably doesn't represent my exact view. It probably is an extreme view for me or an extreme outcome for me considering the question that was asked. So like. We well, wouldn't uh, ask one question though. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And that is an extreme thing, but it's also a reality. Yeah. And I think, well, I think it's, it's, gonna, it's hard for advisors to really delve into the realities. Um, and, like, yeah. I was arguing with my senior advisors about investing in, like, BHP before I started my practice. I was like, this, you can, this is just ridiculous. There's no sustainability here. They're not considering the communities in which they operate. There's, like, we can't, like, the more, like there's finite resources on the planet but we can see that with the murray darling like it's like there there's no water there like mm. what's going to happen now like that's just going to keep happening to our ecosystems and so that's like a yeah it's there'll be there's a range of questions and it's i guess for the client no one's bad the government's not leading this are they so it's kind of up to business to make the changes which is unfortunate yes um but yeah, I think it would be more of a wholesome view rather than just like a one issue thing. Um, and clients aren't bad. We're, we've been, we've not taught to think about our super in schools. No, totally. people have no idea what they're invested in. It's, and I mean, is it their fault? Well, kind of is kind of isn't. Cause it's like, it's like this whole situ this whole industry has been set up by legislation that hasn't really been, I guess, um, executed very well you know, with all the fee problems that have happened in the past, all this stuff where people just blindly let it go. And I think, yeah, getting people in touch with their super. And, you know, like we had this discussion with Hester at the, one of the Responsible Investment Association conferences and he goes, we just can't get people engaged with their super. I'm like, are you, what are you talking to them about? Are you talking to them about their fees and returns? Because people don't understand that. Talk to them about child labour and about fossil fuels and about, how to make the world a better place. And people can feel that, they can understand yeah. that and they can actually engage with that. Yeah. So I think this is actually a good tool and a good way to get people engaged with their super. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. So um, while I guess I'm, tr I'm a little bit concerned about insulting someone's sensibilities because I don't want to put a question in front of them that says that it, it, implicitly if they don't agree to me, then they're putting their hand up to say that they're a bad person. Like I want to kind of avoid that. But what you're saying is um, there's probably for every one of them and there would be those people, but you're saying as far as a tool for getting people activated from apathy to taking action, 
which is, let's face it, as a financial planner, kind of the job description, <laughs> right? So you're, you're, what you're saying is um, it's worth risking potentially making someone feel slightly uncomfortable for one second, um, but the amount of people that you could potentially attract and get a positive experience from sort of supersedes that. And mm-hmm. I guess that's a really good point. So I think, I think it makes a lot of sense to me that you're kind of like what advisors should be doing is perhaps approaching this subject early in the piece, maybe even before there's a face-to-face meeting so that the frame is already set for that to be a part of the conversation. Mm. So whether that they agree with it or not, at least they've got some comprehension so that when the question is asked or the topic is introduced, that it's not completely out of the blue and you're avoiding this concept of awkwardness. I really, really like that idea. I've actually got an advisor mate who before the client comes in for the initial meeting, uh, they have a, a private video on YouTube. And in that private video, it's an introduction to everything that's going to get spoken about. And he even mentions what the fees are going to be. So mm-hmm. he's avoiding the awkwardness of the fee discussion before they come in. And I guess this is another topic. So perhaps as a part of his onboarding, it's like, you, you could say, you know, how much do you know about your super? How much do you care about your super? These are the fees, these are returns. Do you even know where it's invested? Do you care yeah. about sustainability of the planet? Do you care about um, ethical investment? And, and maybe you can approach that or, or broach that subject via written communication or whatever, whatever your collateral is so that when the conversation comes there's a you're probably going to attract more more people because you're activating more people and b that you're avoiding the awkward the potential awkwardness of the issue i guess it's yeah it's for other advisors it would be very different because for me this is this is what i do like i don't do mainstream advice yeah. so if a client i will refer them on but yeah definitely um and i think it's also um I probably asking just a less ge- like a more gentle question rather than ch- like child labor, like more like, yeah, like a sustainability question. And it's not necessarily, I mean, most people that don't care, don't care that they don't care. <laughs> it's the people that care, care about caring, you know, because <laughs> like, <laughs> they don't think there's anything to care about. So they'll be like, Oh, that's just a load of crap, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So, um, let's, um, and thank, thanks for sort of that insight because yeah, that's kind of solved a, a problem that I was having when, when I thought about the subject. Um, let's dive into a little bit about what, like specifically what, what you're doing. So, um, you, you say you don't particularly do mainstream advice and that other advisors are sending you their clients specifically for ethical advice. Well, no, they're not. I'm stealing them. No. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I'm not stealing <laughs> No, I, I, it's, in, it's because a lot of clients that come, they're like, oh, I really like my advisor, like yes. from everything else, but he just, they, well, they can't help me invest ethically and where my values lie. Yeah. And so um, I, we've been, I've tr- we, I did try and think about working with one advisor, but it just, you know, obviously our, just our ideas on investment is so different. We just decided I don't think it would work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so realistically, what you're saying is for the people that ethically investing is super important, they're, they're coming to you because it is such a super important topic. Um, and I guess for the message for everyone is if it's becoming, if, if you can build a business based on the fact that this is such an important topic for a few people, then without a doubt, it's going to be somewhat relatively important for probably many, many more people. Definitely. If the question's asked, I think so. Yeah. 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 So, um, so you're a part of a licensee that's, that does specifically this type of work. How many of you are there around Australia? So in our license, we've got me and Byron, there's three advisors in Brisbane, uh, Tasmania and Perth. Yep. Um, there's also another group that's joined from Sydney, I think. And then, but we're also part of the ethical advisors co-op. So right. that's a group of, oh, I don't know, maybe 
there's, I think there's more than 20 practices now yeah, right. um, of ethical advisors around the country. Um, and so that's, I think I mentioned that we've got that rating tool on the website as well for funds and on the Ethical Advisors Corp website where anyone can go in and just look at how we've rated the funds. Um, we've given them like four out of five green leaves. Um, basically just on their ethics, it's got nothing to do with returns or fees. Yep. So there's funds, super funds and ETFs on there. Um, so, so you guys have your own independent rating? Yeah. Wow. Uh, that, and, and you mentioned that you were on the investment committee before, right? Well, for that, okay. um, I, uh, that so that the ethical advisors co-op is the group, is the cooperative of the advisors from all the practices. Yep. But we, there's also um, my licensee, ethical investment advisors, too many ethicals and all these names. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I have just set up a new, set up the, uh, a new, um, I guess, funds management company. <laughs> Yep. And we've essentially they've developed some portfolios. So there's one um, bond or conservative portfolio, um, and one high 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 risk or growth portfolio, which is Australian and international shares and property. I think I'm not right. quite kind of property in there. And so they're going to be live on Hub Twenty Four next week, next month, I believe. That's cool. Advisors to use. Um, and essentially, What's a, so what what do they type in if they're looking for it? I'm not, I was just looking, I'm not sure um, what, they, what they've called them because okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not really, I'm sort of part of it, but not. Is sure, right? sure. Well, what we might do is. Um, they're Ethical Advisors Funds Management, they're called. Ethical Advisors Funds Management. Okay, cool. And they'll be SMAs basically of managed funds um, and, yeah, and ETFs um, yep. and, we are getting fee discounts on them as well on the on the on the funds that go in once we have enough funds under management. Awesome. Um, but they're all LONSEC approved investments as well. Cool. So so potentially if there's advisors out there who get a client that's super interested in ethical investments, mm. then there are easy, almost advisor selected portfolios mm. or SMAs that mm. they can use on Hub Twenty Four. Yeah, and so they just need to use the two portfolios together and they can just make the asset allocation however they want. Yeah. And so these are our, um, what we believe are best in class for certain reasons. So there's wow. going to be flyers and information um, that's, that's just all going to get to the, to get, what is it called, done with the, um, um, what are they called? Um, who does all that? makes things pretty um, graphic designer. <laughs> oh, right. graphic designers just, we've got all the information. They're just putting those together now. Um, cool. Ready to be released yeah, next month, I believe. That's awesome. Do, do you have an idea of what the, uh, the management expense ratio would be around about? Um, well, it, no. Be, oh, from us? From yeah. the, from, I don't know. Actually, I'll have a look. I've got the flyer open here. Yeah. Um, because we, I've, we've actually got our own ones that are a little bit different. Oh, here we go. Right. The portfolio fee is 0.33%, I believe, for the okay. growth portfolio. Yeah, right. That's um, what, total MER? We, no, that's not the total MER. That would be our fee or their fee. Right. And then there'll be a fee of estimated cost of online investments is 0.79. Okay. So collectively, you're looking at about 1.1. Okay. Yeah, which is not too bad for growth. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. But That's actually, pretty cool. Yeah. Like the fact that that even exists, the fact that advisors around Australia are building ethical SMAs to be held on, you know, popular uh, platforms mm. just tells me that this thing is, it, uh, I, I don't want to use the term take off because I feel like it's been around for ages and it's slowly been getting momentum for a long mm. time. Um, but it definitely, there's a, there's a sense that things are, are going mainstream. I mean, the yeah. fact that you can build an entire business around the speciality of this is really cool and shows, uh, I guess, the growth within broader society. Um, what, here's a question. What, what do you, if you could get every advisor to consider you know, one thing, when it came to investing their clients' money, what would that be? Oh. Like on a, from an ethical investment standpoint? Yeah, of course. 
Um, consider the children. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I someone think of the children. I think, it's, I think it's really hard to, um, it, it's hard, I understand it's difficult for advisors that don't have, I guess, the expertise or understanding in ethical investment um, and even in sustainability to really put the two and two together. Sure, so it's, yeah. it, That's a hard question to answer, but I guess it's like, you know, if you listen to the science, and this is the science, like we are close to like, ecological collapse in australia like the drought is un like unprecedented and so i guess you know we can make a really big difference by investing this way um we can and we can have huge impacts and there's like we don't need to forego returns to make a difference and to invest responsibly and ethically and for the future and for long-term outcomes for all australians not just you know you know for a cl for clients yeah. Um, though they are the first, the, the, the first you know thing to think about, yes. um, and considering that I think the Australian Financial Review just had an article today saying that unless we listen to the Paris Accords for climate change, I mean if we listen to the Paris Accords for climate change, we're still going to lose 0.25 basis basis points over the long term because of climate change. And if we don't listen, which we're not at the moment, it could go up to like almost 80 cent, 80, 80 basis points. Yeah, right. So it's like, it's, I guess it's just, it's just consider the reality of, of the situation um, yeah. and just, yeah, try. And there's a lot of good resources with um, the Responsible Investment Association. They've got a really good page that just explains the, the ethical investment industry because there's a lot of different types of ways to invest ethically. Um, and when we do, I, we do, well, more of the ethical, more at the ethical end of things. Yep. Um, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. No, no, no. Like that, that's really important. Um, my understanding is of, of the Paris um, Accord, which I, I had to check out because I was, I was wondering why, like why it didn't go through. And my understanding is that the biggest polluters in the world somehow were scoped out of of the uh of the paris accord so then it becomes you know oh hat it's su it's such a it's such a difficult conversation i think when it comes to sustainability because if you if you said to me like um we should have less plastics mm. um, i'm like yeah well that's that's easy you know uh, yeah um and then but then if someone goes, well, does say the slums in India deserve a, to live a better life, you know, and get air conditioning, for example, mm. um, it's harder, it's harder for me to agree to that because then someone's life, I guess, even if they're on the other side of the world, we're sort of saying, well, if you were to live a life like us, then the, the world would be even more polluted so i guess i guess you know that's where the techno like the the renewable power conversation comes along and and you go well is it is it easy for them is it or is it this yeah you know, did you ever play like video games where you have civilization you have to go through the bronze age and the iron age and i always go it would be awesome if you know those huge parts of the world could just skip the whole industrial age and go to the technological well, I think, age, I think they will. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, that that saves a lot of the problems. That gives us the cake and eat it too, right? We're invested in the sustainability revolution at the moment. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Because, um, hey, have you have you followed any of the stuff that's come out of Solar City with Elon Musk? Uh, because he, he no. created these roofs which were made of solar panels oh, yes, yes. with tiles. And I'm thinking this is awesome, but yeah. then I haven't really seen anything for, a, I think about three or four years. They did. They, I think people were buying them in Australia. I did see something about yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To, to me, you know, like I, I feel like if there is a commercial way to make this happen, that yeah. guy will figure it out. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there, and there is, there is a, yeah. 
we, we can't, yeah, if you want to be able to continue to operate in, in communities, there actually needs to be people there to buy the products. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I totally get that argument, yeah. Um, awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much, Hope. Uh, you know, I've spoken to a bunch of specialists who, um, but you're the first advisor that I get to speak to about this. And it's been super interesting um, speaking to you about this and like finding out that it's such a core part of your offering and that mm-hmm. there's enough people who are that interested in, um, in getting advice from you simply because you're hundred percent focused on that. And hopefully we can go sort of some way to, um, to playing a role in more advisors considering even at, at a lower, um, a lower priority, but yeah. Thank you. It's, um, it's actually Ethical Investment Week next month. Is it? Yes. So if our advisors are interested, they can go. There's Around the country, there's events being held. Well, to, to be clear, it probably this podcast will come out after. So, so what? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> next that's time. really cool to hear about. What, so what is it called and what's happening? It's Ethical Investment Week. I'm yep. just um, looking at the website now because... Well, I had this little baby, so I'm like not really up with. Um, well, it's run by the co-op, the ethical advisors co-op, and um, it's every year. Oh, cool! But I sort of just do my business and my baby at the moment. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, when is it? Oh, I've gone to the wrong link, but you can have a look if you just search ethical investment week. Um, it should come up. Oh, here it is. Um, and so the 5th to the 11th of October. And so there's lots of events on there that people can go to. Um, and I think they're watching that. A lot of people are watching the movie 2040. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Which is really, I mean, I haven't actually seen it either because I've got a baby. <laughs> Business and baby, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's it's very positive and it just talks about that how we've already got all the solutions to everyone living having a good life on the planet yeah, and it is possible. So it's like, um, yeah, just pushing that. And that's, I guess that's somewhere for advisors to start with as well Is it, it is really scary and hard when you think about it, but just like, let's just ignore that the pro- we've got the problem because we've got the problem. Let's just try and fix it. Yeah. Is a, is a good attitude to take. I think, you know, awesome. Well, again, thanks so much for, for coming on. If there's, if there's any advisors that want to find out more about you or the licensee or your business, or if anyone wants to reach out to you, what's the best, uh, best place to go? Um, you can email me yeah. <laughs> at hope at simplyethical.com.au. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think my details are on my website or, and the um, ethical advisors website as well. Excellent. Again, thank you so much for coming on, sharing, and I really appreciate your time. It's all right. Thanks for having me.